Hello everyone, I'm Krasi and today I will talk about Saturn and this was um, inspired by the questions I had by many of you on how the future Jupiter-Saturn conjunction will influence us and this cannot be answered with a single good or bad answer. This is a very specific question and mainly depends on the placement of Saturn in the natal chart. How Saturn is placed in your natal chart. This will tell you what the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction in the future will give you. I will make separate video on this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. I will give attention to the 12 ascendants, but this is not the most important. Um, it depends really how Saturn is placed. Who is Saturn? Saturn is the Lord of Tears, he's the Lord of Grief, he's the Lord of Karma, he's the one who stays behind the wisdom, he's the one who stays behind our karmic lessons to be fulfilled, he's the one who is responsible for us watching over um, moral values, um, truthfulness, um, understanding of justice oh this is Saturn so it is very difficult to say with one word whether Saturn is good or bad it will depend on what karmic um, lessons we have to learn now what our what we did in our previous incarnation how Saturn is placed in the horoscope we have to look at many factors whether we're born in the day or night, because Saturn is a planet which is diurnal. Saturn is the planet of the daily sect. So Saturn has preferences over the daily charts. So it's a day and night difference whether you're born in the day or in the night. Saturn is easier for people who are born um, in, in the day. Let me share with you just um, a one. Um, chart really the, the last one i yes have on my on my screen uh the day you whether you're born in the day or in the night when the sun is above the horizon so it's a diurnal chart it means that saturn is in highs he's pleased he has dignities in this diurnal chart and he's less harmful another very important thing is whether saturn what kind of aspect Saturn is receiving, whether he is detriment, whether he is exalted, whether he is on a throne, whether he also in what kind of houses he is placed. Now you know that the houses certainly represent areas of our lives beyond any doubt, but the houses also have some spiritual importance. Let's say um, they have they have names given by the traditional astrology. Let's say that you're born in the in the day like this in this chart and let's say that saturn is uh, in the 11th house certainly in the 11th house saturn is receiving also some soft um, better influences because the 11th house is the house of the good spirit the fifth house is the house of the good fortune so the nature of these houses is soft is sweet and saturn is influenced by the natures of these houses and this means that he there he won't be that harmful another thing is of course where saturn is feeling joyful there are many versions of where saturn is having joy but uh, one of the versions which I, I find very appropriate is the 12th house because the 12th house, yes, it's ruled naturally by Pisces, we know that, but the 12th house is the house where Saturn is helping us to win over enemies. It doesn't mean that he's easy in the 12th house, not at all. By no means Saturn is easy in the 12th house. He's certainly not easy in any house, but he's helping us to win over enemies. Yes we will have enemies if he's in the 12th house but we have the powers to overpower them so as you can see there are many many factors on many different levels that we need to look at if we like to see how saturn is placed certainly very important is every degree of the zodiac we're looking at the so called by the ancients paranatalonta which would say every star in, in its projections on the ecliptic or on the ascendant or on the horizon or on mid heaven matters. 
So whether Saturn is, is uh, for example, in uh, the seven degrees of Capricorn, when you're having uh, the powerful outer year star with the eagle star, which brings uh, clairvoyance, or whether Saturn is here in the <clears throat> 30 degrees of Scorpio, where you have the sting of the scorpion, is a day and night difference. Doesn't matter if the person is born in the day or in the night. Certainly, Saturn will be very pleased in Capricorn, his own sign. He will, he can give very different new answers to its behavior. Can you, you can see in the 10 degrees of Capricorn, I have, uh, I, uh, I remember, you have the jaws of the, the jaws of the goldfish. Capricorn is gold and fish, so it's goldfish according to the ancient Babylonians. So Saturn, imagining the jaws of the goldfish, is certainly going to give um, issues related to this particular placement, the Joes, and especially if he is um, influencing the moon, this has this, or Mercury, um, this can uh, afflict in certain way also people's speech. So as you can see, every single degree matters. If, for example, Saturn is in the heart of the lion, and also in, uh, the person is born in the day, this can bring heart diseases because this is the heart of the lion. But because it is the person will be born in the day, this would not be so devastating and the person will maybe not die from this, but will have, have heart issues. And the other way around, if Saturn is in the heart of the lion and the person is born at night, this can be already challenging. So as you can see, there are many, many nuances to look at. Also very important is the, uh, the di direction of the aspects. For example, when you follow the direction of the zodiacal signs, which is um, just the opposite of, of the clock, uh, then you, um, you see that this is the direction. So, so aspect from this direction towards Saturn will be the active aspect and it will be more powerful than if, the, if Venus bring an aspect to Saturn. In this particular place, uh, position here. Saturn is in the first degree of Capricorn, Venus is in the second, and of course Saturn is more powerful here because he on he, this is the direction of the signs, he is afflicting Venus, not that Venus is influencing him. So the aspects of Saturn are of significant importance, the aspects he receives and he makes. In this particular case, he is aspecting Venus. And um, he can create met issues with the, um, uh, this is harmonious aspect, but he can create um, issues related, for example, to the love life, or he can uh, certainly influence um, the, the Venusian uh, matters in people in humans life. Saturn is also responsible for the hidden diseases, those that we may not always be able to detect. That is why it's, uh, we, we need to look at every single phase of the planet. Now in this particular case, Saturn is invisible. He's hidden in the rays of the sun. So he is having this nature to surprise, to be it, he, his nature is hidden, his influence is hidden, and it's not benefic. So this is also important. We, we need to see how Saturn is placed in the natal chart by, in many, many different ways. Another thing, uh, but the, the first important is like I told you, the sect. Another thing that we need to look at, of course, is whether he is in angular position uh, in, um, uh, and also whether he is in the uh, houses which are not considered benefic. All this will change the nature of the planet. Um, in, uh, in ancient Babylon, the, the color attributed to Saturn was black. This is logical because of his uh, wise nature, which is very intense energies. But people would fear, I think I mentioned this, people would fear more uh, Mars because of its, his unpredictability uh, would fear and, and not Saturn. They would respect Saturn. He was the wise God. He and Jupiter were called the big twins. Um, and they had friendly relation because they are two are diurnal planets and 
because of mythological reasons. But Satana was gotten in Urta, who was associated with the agriculture. He was depicted like two, uh, two lion heads. Um, and uh, the god Ninurta was also the one who would bring stability. And when a planet would be conjoined with Ninurta, with Saturn, they would say that the planet is having a black crown because of his majestic powers of Saturn. He is the king, Saturn. Another thing is that if you see uh, Saturn in the hollow of the moon, then you would say, they would say that he would bring uh, stability and wisdom. So as you can see, uh, he's not bad. H how bad he is depending on he depends on his placement. On his placement depend our behavior, our perception of moral values, truthfulness, and all these virtues that I uh, mentioned earlier. And I will read you, and I will share my screen, and I will read you the amazing uh, dual, if you want, um, analysis of the certain uh, influences which valence astrologer, valence the, the, the great valence astrologer for from um, 100 or 200 after Christ, he was living in the ancient Egypt and he took all his notion from Hermes. So he is telling the following. Saturn, look at the, at the dual nature of Saturn, depending, uh, before I read you, I'm saying, depending on the way he's placed in the horoscope, the many factors that we need to look at. Saturn makes those born under him petty, malignant, careworn, self-depreciating, solitary, deceitful, secretive in their trickery, strict, downcast, with a hypocritical air, squalid, black-clad, importunate, set-looking, miserable, with a neutical band, playing waterside trades. Saturn also causes humblings, sluggishness, unemployment, obstacles in business, interminable lawsuits, subversion of business, secrets, imprisonments, chains, griefs, accusations, tears, bereavement, capture, exposures of uh, children. Saturn makes serfs and farmers because of its rule over the land and it causes men to be renters of property, tax farmers and violent inaction. It puts into one's hands great ranks and distinguished positions, supervisions, management of others' property, and the fathership of others' children, of materials, it rules leads, so, so, so on. And then he's saying, uh, you can see, he can give misery, and he can give also uh, royal power like day and night difference and all this will depend of the placement of Saturn. Now um, the ancients has this language of uh, exaggerating a bit so I know the the language of, of, of violence would would sound you a bit too much exaggerated. Now be flexible in perceiving uh, the way the ancients um, would put things because um, we need to read between the lines here. We need to understand that Saturn can give freely the two different faces of, um, of one's um, life and reality. He can either make one miserable or give him royal power. Beautifully placed Saturn can give power but also can give very good qualities like truthfulness. This would be people exalted Saturn um, would for example placed well in a diurnal chart can make people um, really say the truth, maintain high moral values, understand what justice is. Um, even 
people who would be very serious and very stable in their actions, they would, uh, uh, so their word would mean, uh, would have some certain meanings. When they promise this would have a meaning. So Saturn can give wonderful qualities. And then when people have these wonderful qualities, certainly their lives will be easier. What is this to say? Is that even if this, let this, um, sound like remedy even if saturn is placed bad in one's chart let's say he's afflicted by mars or they afflict each other let's say saturn is uh, detriment and this would certainly bring qualities like um need to learn time orientation need to put discipline in one's life need to understand what justice and moral is well basically this is what has to be done in order to soften the influences of saturn because you see it and this is not the only text which is giving i wanted to show you valence's text because he's showing exactly the duality how saturn can be misery uh, and how saturn can be actually abundance it all depends on how he's placed in the chart. What astrology is helping in this sense is when we diagnose that Saturn is badly placed, we know what the, what the person should work on in order to improve Saturnian's influence. Saturn is representing the father figure. Oftentimes when very badly placed, when invisible, he shows lack of father or problem with the father figure. And it would say, for example, that there is in this area the person needs to work on either forgiving or working on the karma, which it, he or she is um, inheriting from parents or, or from ancestors. So Saturn is a very good diagnostic tool on knowing what to work on in this lifetime because he's the karma. He's showing the, uh, where everything is karma in the horoscopes. The lunar nodes are karma, everything is karma. But Saturn is showing where the blockages are, where the possibilities for hidden diseases are, where we can, where our karmic, um, karmic um, lessons are occurring in this lifetime, what to work on. And it is not scary to see in the chart whether the Saturn is, uh, for example, causing um, challenges. It is even very useful because then the person will know what to work on, what to improve, what kind of spiritual uh, practices to do in order to improve the Saturn influences. And we are authors of our own uh, karmas. We are authors of our own disasters, if you want. We are the masters of our own disasters. So we can we can ruin our um, you know lives, or we can um, or we can um, make make um, a very harmonious lifetime out of this uh, and any other incarnation on Earth. It's it is in our hands, and Saturn is this to to diagnose what to work on so it can be it can be a wonderful thing to see how certain is placed in one's chart to diagnose and to work on it um, this is important information i'm telling you because later on when saturn and, and jupiter make this conjunction um, based on this we will know what this conjunction will denote to the person's life for the next 20 or, or, or more years, because this, uh, this is a conjunction which will have uh, energies that we will experience for, for quite some years ahead. So it is an important conjunction. What it depends, what it depends on, how Saturn, well, I'm not forgetting Jupiter, but Saturn is the heavy, difficult planet who is the, uh, who is the boss in Capricorn, who is the Lord. So his influences are very important. Saturn, Jupiter will stay one year and will pass, but Saturn is staying there for two and a half years. So Saturn, we need to look at first when we are judging this conjunction. And what we look at, if the person is born in the day or at night, we look in which house he's placed, whether he's joyful or not, whether he receives the nature of the house of the good fortune or the house of the bad luck, for example. We need to see whether Saturn, what kind of aspect Saturn is receiving. We need to see in which fast Saturn is. I can tell you that Saturn can have a very difficult heliacal fast, which is called cosmic setting. 
These, there are two very, very specific phases of the opposition of a planet to the sun. The planet can be having opposition to the sun, but this opposition has two phases, which are subphases, and these phases are called a chronicle rise or cosmic setting. How is this? It's actually simple, simple to detect. You have in the horizon. And then when the planet is rising here and the sun is and the sun is setting, you have in the chronicle rise. And we say God sees God because two gods are watching towards each other. When the planet is in a chronicle rise, this is basically meaning that the planet is just born powerful. This is the symbolical meaning with the, which the ancients would look at. It is like a powerful rise of the planet. And if this is Saturn, <clears throat> he's just symbolically born. This is happening when the sun and the, and, the, and the planet are making opposition. That planet is not that evil. He's born, he's very powerful. Powerful, powerful. How he influences the chart? Of course, it will depend on the aspects he's making, receiving, and so on. After that, you're having the cosmic setting, and then the planets turn. The sun is rising, and the planet is setting, and this is cosmic setting. This is bad. The planet is dying, and the natures of the planet are very different, and this certain can be bad. So, both cases, planet is very near Earth, very, very, very influential, not necessarily good. I'm just explaining you on how many levels we need to look at when we need to judge on the planetary influence, not only whether they're on aspects, we look at the heliacal phases, not only if the planet is retrograde, stationary, and so on, which also matters, but there are included the phases of a chronicle rise and cosmic setting, which are astronomical term terms, may not known to astrology, but these are of significant importance on the influences of Saturn. I remember that uh, in 2018, in the summer, when when Mars was in a chronicle rise, and I remember that people got beaten, and he was in um, with Ketu in Capricorn. I remember people got beaten, poisoned. Uh, I personally had a car accident. Um, uh, it was it was crazy time. Mars was in a chronicle rise. He would be visible like a big red spot in the sky, like something that doesn't have equivalent. He was like in the in our in our room. So powerful you would see him. Imagine Saturn in a chronicle rise. And this is happening when there is opposition with the sun every year. So this is not a rare phenomena. And all this matters. So this is big bracket just to tell you that how Saturn is placed in your natal chart would be what every transit of Saturn will bring you. So this was my message. Well, um, I don't know, maybe I didn't say everything, but there is so much to tell about, about Saturn. As you see, it's a day and night difference on his influences. Let's see, uh, we still have time for Jupiter-Saturn conjunction. Every conjunction of Saturn and other planets has to be looked at this way. Um, well, if you, if you like to know how this will influence you, you feel free to contact me. My um, details are under this video and your comments are welcome.